Hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> if you get what I'm talking about, shame on you. You shouldn't have watched that show. Um, if you don't understand, you are a better person than, than the rest of the class. Um, I, as many of you uh, have probably, I've gotten sucked into the Tiger King. Um, well, I've sucked in and spit out the other end because we're, my wife and I uh, binge watched what, five, six, seven episodes of it in uh, less than 24 hours. And so um, I'm ashamed and I feel dirty, um, but here I am. So um, I, I shouldn't feel too bad because I imagine that 90% of the people watching this have seen it as well. So um, I want to talk to you just a little bit about... Um, so um, this week we're talking about terrorism. And, um, you know, one of the... Uh, I've got you reading multiple documents. I've got you working on a little assignment. Uh, I've got some discussion posts up. You're not going to have a PowerPoint uh, this week, but you are going to have me sort of walking you through a concept that we're not really talking about outside of one of the articles that I posted up for you to take a look at, um, and it's the uh, stages of grief. And um, there's no place to really stick this, and as I was... Um, sort of digging down the, the rabbit, uh, you know, walking down the rabbit trail there, as I tend to do, I got to thinking about how this is important and how it, it recently, uh, with terrorist events and stuff that have happened uh, within the last uh, few years, um, it's important to understand what this, this, this uh, stages of grief looks like, and um, specifically when you are encountering people, um, because someone experiencing the stages of grief over the loss of a marriage, right, for a divorce, is vastly different. I mean, the, the steps are the same, but it's vastly different than somebody who's walking through this, the uh, steps of, or the stages of grief for, you know, that their family was just um, taken away from them and they've never, you know, they'll never see them again. Um, and so I want, I want you to think about it now. It's, a, it's an opportunity for me to plug it in, and so I, I want you to see it. So, um, so um, Kubler-Ross, You've probably heard this before, maybe in a sociology class. I don't know if they talk about it in psychology class, but we're going to just run through the steps, and uh, you're going to hear me give you seven steps. Kubler-Ross's original model, I believe, just had five, um, but you'll see that the others are, that, you know, they don't take anything away from the other five, but they just sort of add a, an additional dimension. So um, first, uh, and this is one of the additional ones, is this idea of shock. Um, um, it's this initial paralysis, if you will, um, when you receive the news. I am sure that you can um, think back to receiving some sort of bad news or some shocking information, um, and it leaves you, you know, like this, this wave of disbelief comes over you, and that's normal. Um, the very beginning part of, of grieving is this shock, this... Um, um, really uh, uh, an inability to do anything. The second step is called denial. Um, this is trying to avoid the, the inevitable. Um, it's not always rational. In fact, it's often irrational when someone starts to think about, you know, you hear the, uh, the death of a loved one, my grandfather dies. Um, the first thing you say is, no, 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 that can't be. You know, he was just you know, he was just here, he was in good health. It's this, this step, and this is a, you can track these, right? So you've got shock, then you've got denial. Third being anger, right? Um, after the, the, the initial shock sort of wears off some. And, and again, there's not a, uh, a, a specific time period that these happen based on a number of variables um, that we've talked about in class, you know, like uh, experiencing of trauma in the past, um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the time could be either shorter or longer, but then you have this anger, right? You're f this this frustrated outpouring of the, all this sort of bottled up frustration and anger at the situation, right? Um, you know, if we use the example of my grandfather dying, you know, my my mother says, "Oh, you know, your 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 grandfather's dead." <gasps> what? Uh, no, this can't be. He, you know, he was just ninety years old and he was in good health. And then you start to get angry. Well, this isn't fair. Why did, you know, why did uh, God take my grandfather? Why did he do this? And, you know, that sort of thing. That anger starts to boil up. Then you have bargaining, right? You're uh, seeking in vain 
for a way out, right? You start to think, well, you know, what, what, what if we do this or what, what, what if we do that? You know, the, the um, belief in what is actually occurring in front of you, you start to try to figure a way out. After bargaining comes depression, right? The final real, realization of the inevitable. This is happening in front of me. This is happening to me. And there's nothing I can do about it. Um, it's this sort of low point depression. Not in, not in a sort of the, the clinical sense of a depression, but it's just this low point. Um, then you've got this, this, uh, this other piece. This is another addition to Kubler-Ross's initial model, but it's this testing, right? Um, where you're seeking realistic solutions. You're trying to figure out if there is a way, right? You've, you've, you've done this, right? Shock. You hit this sort of this depressed area. And now you're trying to figure out ways out, right? Then after the testing piece is this final piece is the, the acceptance. This is finally um, finding your way forward, finding a way out of this sort of this muck and mire, understanding that this is your new reality. And this is something that you now have to live with, right? Um, I, I'm, I'm really going to be pulling for this because I, I think some of the stages you would not be able to see. But I think if we were to talk about um, what is going on with the COVID-19 uh, virus, and I know I keep talking about this, but it's in the news. It's the, it's the only thing people are talking about. So I want to use it as much as I can as examples. Um, you know, when this first started happening, you, you saw this, right? This shock. I cannot believe that this is actually happening in the United States. What? Then denial. You have people who say, oh, this is just a, um, you know, this is the government's doing this sort of thing. Anger at the, la la um, the lack of sort of freedoms that we, we experience normally, right? We're not allowed to leave our house. Um, bargaining, trying to figure out, well, how do we make this work? And then finally, I think after two weeks, I think people are starting to get into a funk, uh, a lower level sort of depression, if you will, because they're starting to realize it's the, this, the, the testing piece. There's not a lot that we can do as individuals to get out of this. And we're just sort of learning to live with this. Um, just like everything else, it doesn't mean we've, we've stopped hurting over it or we've stopped being troubled by it. But we've just sort of moved through the seven steps of the, the, that I just ran you through. You move through these seven steps and you just sort of get to a point where there's this level of acceptance. So, um, And again, I, I would challenge you to think about things in your life. And I, and, I, and I think you could probably find yourself moving through these stages of grief um, and, and multiple times. Just because I call it grief doesn't necessarily mean that someone had to die or there had to be some terrible catastrophe. Um, some of you are probably grieving over the fact that we're not going to have graduation or that you are stuck at home and not able to be with your friends and, and, and your community here at the university. I get that. And I think if you look at shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, testing, acceptance, those seven steps, you're going to be able to find yourself as what you're, what you're going through currently, even with the mourning and the grief over the loss of sort of the rest of the semester. So um, I hope that sort of cleared some things up. You're going to see this, like I said, in several of the documents that you're looking at this week. Um, focus on it. Uh, look at it. You're going to see this stuff. This, this model has been around for a long time and it's going to continue to be around because this is the sort of the nature of human beings. We do this sort of thing. This is the cycle that we often find ourselves in. So um, that is all I have. So that's my uh, contribution to this week's uh, activities and discussion. But um, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. I, I, I think that you guys are embracing this as best you can. I get that it's not ideal, but it is the reality that we're living in. Um, you guys are doing a good job. Keep it up, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.